Well, Felim Kine is the Director of Research and Investigations at Physicians for Human Rights. He joins us now from New York. Thanks for being with us. Uh, you know what, tell us first just how you feel about this latest development and the fact that the national anthem bill was passed by Hong Kong's own legislature. Uh, you know, this is so ominous and the timing, you know, the fact that it coincides with the 31st anniversary of the Tiananmen massacre is absolutely chilling. And, you know, we have to keep in mind that what the, the people of Hong Kong, and we've been talking about millions of Hong Kongers, you know, men, women, children, young, old, who have taken to the streets to try to push back this mainlandization, this creeping influence of the Chinese Communist Party uh, and its absolute disregard for rule of law in Hong Kong. And so now the fact that we even have at this moment uh, a, a criminalization of uh, any type of tampering with the national anthem of China just tells you how dangerous Hong Kong is becoming for, right, for voices of freedom and, and universal human rights. So if that uh, national anthem bill feels ominous to you, what about the national security legislation? I mean, if that does go through, would that effectively end Hong Kong's autonomy? It, it's terrifying. It's because it, it, the, the remit of the national security bill is it, cra it, it criminalizes within Hong Kong. It applies the same metrics uh, with regards to, quote unquote, treason, quote unquote, terrorism, quote unquote, subversion that the Chinese Communist Party in China uh, applies to lawful dissidents who are merely uh, exercising their rights of freedom of expression, freedom of association. Um, and also, let's keep in mind that there are more than one million Uyghur Muslims who are in concentration camps in Xinjiang because the Chinese Communist Party has essentially uh, conflated uh, Muslim uh, religious, religious belief with terrorism. So the implications for, ta for, for Hong Kong are, are really disturbing. Right. So, uh, tell us then, I mean, uh, what, if anything, do you think the global players, mainly you know, the United States and the United Kingdom, should and can do about it? Well, to a large extent, over the last 20, 30 years, the Chinese part, you know, the international community has essentially uh, acquiesced or been passively or actively complicit as the Chinese government has consistently and uh, continually uh, tightened the screws on its own people and is now extending uh, that same threat in terms of the threat of right to rights and freedoms to Hong Kong. It's worth remembering that it wasn't so long ago in the 1990s that trade agreements with China included benchmarks specifically related to human rights. Those have been thrown out the window in this, due to this, this idea that China is such an important business financial trading partner that the, the international community can no longer apply or stand by the values that it adheres to within the United Nations covenants and within their own constitutions to the, you know, the, to the people of China. So it's been a betrayal. Do you think next year, Hong Kongers will be able to commemorate the events of Tiananmen Square in Hong Kong? I will answer this way. You know, the events of the, of the past year, but also if you go back three or four years to the umbrella movement protests in Hong Kong, is just how inspiring, how courageous uh, Hong Kong people are in confronting authoritarian threats to their freedoms and taking to the streets no matter what the costs. So will they be allowed, will, will Hong Kong people be allowed to take to the streets? Quite likely not. Will they do it anyway at great risk to themselves for uh, in defense of rights and freedoms that they value and treasure? Quite likely. Do you fear, though, we could see, I mean, from the way you're describing this, there could be potentially a Tiananmen Square in Hong Kong? Well, you know, the, what we've seen is, what we've seen over the, over the last year are developments in Hong Kong that we would have thought uh, unimaginable 10, 20 years ago. So uh, the fact that the, the idea that there could eventually be deployment of uh, Chinese uh, People's Army troops in Hong Kong to quote unquote manage protests, this is a, a, a visceral threat okay. to Hong Kongers. Nothing is off the table. Philim Kine, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.